Hey guys, it's Joel Williams and Chase LV coming to you today with video number 33 out of our video series, The 52 Weeks of Personal Injury. Today we want to talk about a topic that might be more beneficial to attorneys than to people that are injured, but it is tips for taking better depositions. So what's tip number one, Chase? Listen. That's it. Oh, no, okay. You gotta listen. Um, no, I, <laughs> right. So. Whenever you're taking a deposition, basically what a deposition is, if you don't know, it's a question and answer session under oath where one party asks the other party just a series of questions related to whatever the incident might be, right? So it's a question and answer session. The biggest thing that you need to do as either the lawyer taking the deposition, even the person being deposed, is to listen, right? Listen to the question, listen to the answer, because you might be asking something and they might answer something completely different or completely off the wall which is then going to lead you to a whole another line of questions if you choose to go down that path. And same thing when you're answering a question, you might answer something that wasn't even close to what was asked. Um, and then it takes you a completely different route. So yeah, tip number one is absolutely listen to the question, listen to the response uh, when you're taking a deposition. Yeah, and very closely related to that is get your eyes off of your notes and have a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I get it, like we've all done it, when we're, especially when we first start out and start taking depositions. We have all these great ideas and we write them down in our notepad and we want to make sure we ask all those questions. But in the years that I've been practicing law, the best pieces of information that I've ever gotten is when I get off of my notes and I'm having a conversation with the deponent about what he or she knows. Um, and then they just get to talking. Right, right exactly. Your notes are always going to be there. So yeah. have the conversation. If you need to go back after a break or something and make sure you hit on everything that you wanted to you know, hit on, do that. But right, have the conversation, listen, be engaging, engage with the deponent. Um, I know another tip that we kind of have is you want to make them feel comfortable, right? I always say kill them with kindness because you want to make them open up, be relaxed, feel like it's a relaxed setting so then they can tell you the information that you're trying to get. If you come in hot and heavy, banging tables, throwing pencils and all that type of stuff, no one's gonna to wanna to say anything about anything. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really get you anywhere. Yeah, and it's, it really is one of those situations where as an attorney who sat through my client's depositions more times than I can care to admit, when my client, when the, when the other attorney is listening and just letting my client ramble and ramble and ramble, no matter how many times I tell my client to just answer the question, don't ramble, don't get diarrhea of the mouth, right. it happens all the time. Right. And those are the moments where you get key pieces of information that's gonna help your case. It's when you're just listening and letting the deponent talk. Um, so another thing I would say is be strategic about the questions you ask. So if you do your research before the deposition and you already know the answers to most of the questions you're gonna ask, sometimes the deposition's just giving the deponent an opportunity to be dishonest with you. And if they are dishonest with you as the attorney asking the questions, you don't always have to go for the kill shot in the deposition. Um, you can save it for trial. So for example, if you're a defense lawyer and you're asking a plaintiff, have you ever been arrested? And you know from your public records research, uh, research that they have been arrested three times and they say no. There's really no benefit to pulling out those records at that point unless you're just trying to beat them over the head and scare them into settling the case mm -hmm. and hitting them with those records right then because sometimes that criminal history may not be admissible at trial in and of itself if they'd admitted to it, but now that they've lied about it, Maybe you can use it at trial to impeach them and show that they're un, you know, not worthy of belief, right? right. Um, same thing with pre-existing conditions and stuff of that nature. Um, we as plaintiff's lawyers lots of times like to um, ask open-ended questions to people who are the at-fault party to see what kind of excuses they're going to raise. And lots of times they'll just get to talking and talking and we've already got witnesses in our back pocket that are going to contradict the excuses that this deponent is giving. Right, so, and I think another kind of trick too that we'll sometimes do, or I'll sometimes do in deposition, speaking of people talking and talking and talking, a lot of people don't like that awkward silence. Yeah. Right, like where it's quiet and no one says anything for a while, so like if you ask a question and you know the deponent's talking, sometimes I'll just sit there, just like look down, I won't say anything for a good 10, 15 seconds of that, just that dead silence, 
and then the deponent gets nervous, maybe they think that they didn't you know, answer the question like they were supposed to or want to offer more information, and they'll just keep talking. Yeah. So sometimes that's a tactic, I'll just sit, be quiet, don't say anything, let it kind of feel awkward, like well, how come no one's not saying anything? Um, and you'll be surprised what happens there. So. Yeah, I think another um, tip that can be very helpful is if you know it's going to be an important witness, go ahead and videotape the deposition. Um, because sometimes those awkward moments come across so well and videotaped, whereas if it's just a printed out transcript, you don't get those pauses and all that. Right. Perfect example is uh, when I first started practicing law, my boss at the time was deposing a doctor who had sniffed cocaine before he went in and did the surgery. So he asked him, have you ever used cocaine? And the doc, he was videotaping it, and the doctor looks at the ground, looks around, scratches his head, stares at the sky, looks around, nobody's saying anything. And after two or three minutes of that, he looks up and says, I plead the fifth. That was some of the most powerful testimony that I'd ever seen, and he, if that video, if that deposition had not been videotaped, it would have just read, have you ever taken cocaine? I plead the fifth. Next question. And you wouldn't have gotten all that. So right. you can imagine how powerful that would be for a jury. So it's always, a, it's always a good idea to at least consider incurring the extra expense to videotape a deposition if it's going to be an important witness. Right. It's that nonverbal communication that you don't get uh, you know, when you're just reading the transcript, which is why it's always important to bring witnesses to, you know, to uh, the actual trial if and when you get to that point, or at least videotape the witnesses that you know for a fact are going to be shown at trial mm -hmm. as opposed to showing up. So um, another kind of <clears throat> tip when you're taking a deposition is to ask for, you know, certain documents in a deposition. A lot of times when we, you know, send a deposition notice, um, we'll have already sent what's called a request for production of documents, you know, asking the other side to give us documents. Sometimes in our deposition notices, we'll send along with the notice request for actual documents to bring to the deposition. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a list of, you know, especially if it's an expert, a list of materials that they relied on, any, you know, correspondence between opposing counsel, all that type of stuff we always ask for and have them bring uh, to the deposition. And if they don't bring it, you ask them about it. Do you have it? Where is it? Where is it located? Have you done anything to find this information? Have you done anything to preserve this information? Uh, this information because that's really going to kind of set them up for either a spoliation mo motion, meaning that they had evidence and they didn't preserve it, or it just gives you more, um, I guess, information to research or dive into later on after the deposition. Yep. And I would also ask, in, in addition to just about the documents, about other witnesses, about other people that may have information that could be, um, that could give you insight into whatever facts you're dealing with. Um, because the truth of the matter is, is when you're responding to written discovery like interrogatories and requests for production of documents, and when you're receiving it from the other side, it's always drafted by the attorney. Now the attorney should be getting that information from their client, but you can imagine an attorney that's representing a corporation, they probably have one, maybe two contacts to get this information. That contact is probably not the person that's in the, that's boots on the ground in the record retention department and all that. There's somebody that's asking somebody else, it's asking somebody else. So sometimes if you can just get a person that's boots on the ground to give you the information that you need and identify people and identify documents, that is um, a gold mine of information that, that may help your case. And if there's information or documents that would hurt your case, now's the time to find out about it instead of when you're in trial. Yeah, that's exactly right. And another sort of tip kind of just when you're deposing the whoever it is, whether it's a 30B6 rep or the person who calls the rec, is to get the why question answered, right? Why did this event happen? Why did you decide to do that? Why was this decision made? Why was this person there on this date? You wanna get every single explanation, good or bad, from the witness so you can box them in so that there's no surprises at trial. Exactly, and I think probably the last tip that people often forget is give them an opportunity to tell you information that they want you to know. So often at the end of the deposition, I'll ask the witness, okay, thank you for your time today. Is there anything else that you feel like is important that I should know? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you, I get some nuggets when I ask that question sometimes. So, um, so always consider asking that, <clears throat> excuse me, always consider asking that question. But I think that'll about wrap it up for week 33. Uh, if this video has been helpful to you, we'd appreciate you giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel. 
Otherwise, we will see you next week for video number 34, where we will discuss tips for winning your trial.